What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Polish Productions. Welcome back to the channel. And yeah, thanks for stopping by to watch uh, the next video. So today I'll be going through how I record vocals through Universal Audio's Apollo interfaces. I'll be using Logic Pro X as my DAW today. And I'll be showing you. And that's what happens when you load a session that's too big and the entire computer decides to destroy itself. Yep. As I was saying, today I'll be using Logic Pro X as my DAW. And I'll also be walking you through the Universal Audio console application in terms of how to set everything up so that you or the vocalist that you're working with are having an effective recording session. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So before I go into software and dive into everything, I want to share just why I use Universal Audio and why I like it so much. So the reason why I use the Apollo interface and I have the uh, the Apollo X4 here um, is two main reasons. So the first is there's no latency and you can use a, a bunch of Universal Audio plugins on your recording chain, whether to monitor or to record, and you're not gonna have any latency in your headphones. The second reason is you have a choice of what kind of preamps you wanna use. So um, you can either use the Apollo preamps that are built into the interface, or you can use one of their emulations of some of the classic preamps like the Neve 1073, uh, the Manly Vox Box, uh, the Avalon cha Channel Strip, and it'll actually emulate how those preamps sound now. It's not the exact same thing as having a vintage 1073, but if you're trying to color the sound a little bit, if you're trying to get your vocals to shine a little bit um, using one of those preamps, then you know it's a good and semi-affordable way of being able to use that 1073 color, for example, um, without having to spend $10,000 on a vintage Neve 1073. Now today I'll get started just by uh, walking you through the UAD console software first, and then we'll dive into Logic and I'll show you how to route everything and how to make everything work properly. So when you first open up UAD console app, um, you're presented with a bunch of things. Because I have the X4, I have a bit more inputs than maybe you might have on a twin um, or the, I think it's called the arrow, which is the one with the um, single input. Um, but more or less, it's the same principle. On the top left right here are your gain knobs for uh, for your preamps. So either within the app here or in the interface itself, you can choose between the different inputs that you have. You specify whether it's a line input, like if you're recording a synth or a mic input, uh, and then you go from there. Because today we're focusing on using the uh, Apollo preamps, we're just going to focus on the mic setting here and we'll walk through uh, everything one by one. So when you get started, the first thing you wanna do is obviously turn on your microphone. Turn on Phantom Power to do that. Make sure your microphone is plugged in and connected before you turn on Phantom Power because you don't wanna turn this on and then connect the mic because that can cause some electrical issues and potentially damage your microphone and or the preamp. The second thing that I do sometimes is actually enable the low cut. Um, and it's a hardware low cut in the interface itself. I think the default for the Apollos is a low cut of about um, 70 hertz and below. But if you open, so if you see this section here, um, there's an option to have a unison insert. And what this means is if you want to emulate one of the vintage preamps from the past, you can do so using the unison preamp section here. So let's say, I want to use the Neve 1073. So on the Neve, the low cut can be adjusted. I think you can have a low cut at 50, 80, 100, and, and so on. You can keep it somewhere around 50 to 80, it's up to you. Yeah, you have other options here. So you can also uh, add in an EQ, the 1073 EQ. I usually don't EQ uh, when I record vocals just because I like to do some of that editing later. Um, but you can definitely EQ if you're if you're feeling brave. And then you have your gain knob. So typically for gain, the more gain you have, obviously the louder you signal, but the more coloration uh, you'll get uh, in your in your vocal. So for a clean, modern, transparent vocal, 
I'll typically go for about 40 to 45 gain right here on the Neve 1073. And if the levels aren't hot enough, you know, my target level is about maybe minus 18 to minus six. Uh, if it's not there, then instead of driving the gain knob even more, um, trying not to color the sound too much, I'll typically adjust this output knob right here. And I'll adjust it so I get it to a level that's uh, good and a level that will enable a good recording. The next section you see here uh, are your inserts. Inserts are effects, could be EQs, could be compressors. And there's two ways to use inserts. On the right hand side over here, you have a UAD monitor and UAD record button. If you have UAD monitor enabled, which is this blue button, and you have, let's say, uh, I don't know, a compressor, then you're able to monitor with a compressor, but it's not going to record that compressed signal into your DAW. If you enable UAD record, then anything that you record through the inserts is recorded into your signal in into the DAW. So typically I'll do UAD monitor, I'll compress and EQ after the fact. Now the next section here relates to if you want certain effects on your chain and how you want to hear the monitoring through your headphones or the vocalist uh, that you're working through through their headphones. Uh, so this aux section right here allows you to uh, pretty much send a signal to the inserts on the right hand side. So let's say here, if I want like a reverb, what I can do is then send some of the signal to this reverb and then have the uh, vocalist monitor with a reverb without it being recorded uh, into the signal as well. Just again, as a way to sort of get to a uh, semi uh, finished vocal, um, in your monitoring chain so that the singer feels comfortable and confident uh, while they sing. The last thing that you'll wanna do is actually in the settings right here, you'll want to disable input delay compensation. All this is for is if you're using a second Apollo interface and you're using multiple, multiple mics using that second Apollo interface, this just ensures that there's no delay problems between the different devices. But if you're just using one interface and you're recording one uh, singer at a time, just turn this off and this ensures that you have absolutely zero latency while you're recording. So this is the UAD app. Now we have to set things up correctly in Logic. In Logic, there's a few things you'll wanna do. So if you open preferences, First, obviously make sure that your input output device is the uh, Universal Apollo interface. The second thing that you'll wanna do, uh, if we open up the settings here, is disable software monitoring and, and input monitoring, uh, just because you're monitoring through the UAD uh, console app and you don't wanna be monitoring the same signal through Logic. So just make sure you have that disabled so that there's no uh, conflicts between the two apps. When you insert an audio track, make sure that you select the right input. So for me, it's input one for the mic right here. And you'll also want to send the audio from the stereo signal of Logic to, uh, to the uh, console app. And there's a reason for that. So on output right here, um, you'll want to select the virtual outputs one and two you'll want to go to the uh, UID console app. On the right-hand side over here, you'll have your Q outputs. So in my case with the Apollo X4, I can select between two different headphone outputs because there's two headphones jacks here, one for me and one for the, for the vocalist that I'm working with. But the cool part about it is I can choose whether to monitor and listen to the entire mix between the UID console app and, and Logic or if I wanna to listen to the mix that's happening in the console app itself. And the reason for that is you can monitor the vocal uh, volume separately from Logic's volume. And you can see right here, if we select the Q output of one and two, uh, or let's say if you have an Apollo Twin, it would just be Q1. On the vocal chain right here, you would send that signal using the Q1 uh, knob right here 
to Q1, same for the effect. And you would then take, take these virtual inputs uh, that Logic is sending the, the music to, and you would link them together to create a virtual pair. And you would decide how much of the music or the instrumental or the beat do you wanna hear in your headphones? So for example, if you wanna have your vocal or your voice a little louder and the music a little quieter or the other way around, you can do so very easily through the one app right here. Now, you don't have to do this. You can also just adjust the master volume in Logic and then adjust you know, the volume um, of the cue right here for your vocal, but it's just easier if you're trying to figure out the right balance between the instrumental and the vocal just to do it all in one app. Um, so I just do it right here. Send everything to Q1 or Q2, select your volume for the vocal, for the vocal effects, for the instrumental, the beat, and you're set to go, you're happy, the vocalist is happy, and you can have a really good recording session like this. So the last thing that you'll wanna do is you'll wanna make sure that you have some sort of recording template set up in Logic so that when you record the vocal and you're listening back to it, you're not hearing the dry uh, vocal with no effects, no compression, um, nothing, because that's gonna be very uninspiring and it's gonna make the, uh, the vocalist feel like shit. So what you'll wanna do is at least set up some basic compression. In my case, I have the UAD 1176 followed by LA2A just to catch with this 1176, um, some of the peaks and then the LA2A just for some light compression. Soothe 2 for de-essing, light de-essing and uh, just removing some of that hard, harshness from the vocal. I have that set up so that the vocal sounds nice and clean. And then the next thing I have is a template of effects that I've set up routed through different buses to, again, sort of spice up the vocal during the recording session. And what I have is typically a selection of a Dimension D, micro, uh, micro shift, some delays, uh, slap delay, some reverbs, uh, and a echo chamber effect. Um, obviously, this is going to be different depending on your song, depending on the style that you're going for. But as long as you have all of this set up, all of these effects, you can at least within 10 seconds, depending on the vibe of the song, just figure out how much of each effect you want on your, uh, on your chain. So that when you're listening back to your vocal, it's lightly compressed, soothe is taking care of some of the S's, some of the harshness some of the effects, again, that match the vibe of the song during playback and giving you a nice vibe for how the vocal is sitting in the mix, how the vocal is sitting in the production and, and how the recording is going it, itself. Uh, now, after the fact, obviously you can go in and EQ the vocal to make it sound nice, but just for the purposes of recording, I find that this is extremely helpful. And yeah, that's really all there is to it, uh, to using a universal audio Apollo interface. I used a crappy interface for the longest time. And since I switched to the Apollo, it's been significantly better with, with how it can record vocals. Yeah, I think the zero latency and the ability to uh, sort of monitor with effects and the ability to emulate vintage preamps uh, gives the Apollos a huge leg up with uh, being able to produce clean vocals and, and recordings. And yeah, that's that's why I love using them. So I hope this video was useful, helping explain how to use the Apollo with the console app, how to route it through a particular DAW. I know I use Logic today, but the same principles apply to pretty much every other DAW that's, that's out there. And yeah, if you have any questions or if you want to see an example of a recording session using the Apollo, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to come up with a cool video for you guys so you can see the Apollo live in action. So yeah, if you liked today's video, hit that thumbs up button, it really helps the channel. Subscribe and catch on the next one.